Now when you first launch Photoshop, it displays a start screen like this. And this is a help guide really to help you to get to the files that you want to work with. Now here we've got quick access to recent files, to libraries, to presets. We can make new files or, or we can open existing ones. Now at the bottom of the screen you'll see there's going to be links and these are links to other content and learning materials. And this will be dynamic and it will change periodically. Now don't worry if your screen doesn't look exactly like mine. I've got some recent files here that I've opened. You may have some, you may have none. Now the files here are in list view. If you want to see them as thumbnails then I can click this little icon here which is grid view. And what that'll do is show me everything in little picture forms. Now in addition to being able to see our recent file we can also see what's called libraries. Now here I've got two libraries. I've got logos and I've got training. Now libraries are great ways to store different assets that you're using on a project. For example, maybe this, a set of colour swatches that you want for a particular project or font styles or brushes or photographs. And these are stored on the cloud and you can access them between different computers and you can share them with others. You can collaborate with them. And I'll just open mine, so if I click on Logos, you can see it opens up the library panel and you'll see all the logos and colours that I've got set up in one of my libraries. And that's accessible now on all three of the computers that I have, no matter where I am. And I've got a training one as well. You can see you can set different ones up for different applications. Now let's click on Presets. So here we've got a number of different presets that are listed here for printing. But there are additional presets that we can access if we click on the new button or use the keyboard shortcut Control and N or Command and N if you're on a Mac. So here I could rename a document or select from a larger set of presets. So if I wanted to say select ooh, let's say international paper then here I can see I've got lots of different presets associated with international paper. Or if I wanted photos, you can see here now that I've got a lot of extra presets to do with particular photograph sizes. Or if you prefer, you can type in some heights and widths and resolutions of your own to create your own document. Now, As we click OK, Photoshop will open up that particular document that we've just created. And it hides the start screen. All right, now let's close this document. I'll just click the little X or we can go to File and Close. And you'll see the Start Stream comes back again. Now if I want to open a document, I can click on the Open button. And then I can use the navigation here to navigate to a document that I want to open. Again, if we want to open a document, we click on it and click on Open. And again, Photoshop hides the Start Screen and opens the document that you want to work with. And then same again, if I close the document, it brings back the start screen again. So that's a quick overview of the start screen in Photoshop CC. Now you'll either love it or you'll hate it. If it's the latter, you can turn it off. And you do that in preferences. If I go to edit and down to preferences and general, there's a little tick box here that says show start workspace when no documents are open. Well, if you don't want it to happen, if you untick that and click OK, what you've got to be wary of here, it says workspace changes will take effect the next time you start Photoshop. So if you do make this change, it won't happen until you've shut down Photoshop and restarted it. I don't want to make the change, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Well, that's it. The start screen in Photoshop CC. I hope you found that useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment below the video. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.